Big news today about the 12 pin, 12 volt high power connectors like this one. Nvidia just provided an official statement on the 12 volt high power connector concerns regarding melting connectors. We just covered those if you're curious. And uh, today we're gonna be covering that statement. We're gonna be going over some questions that we had for Nvidia relating to it, some follow ups, uh, the topic of Nvidia's warranty that was in the news the last couple of days, and the best way to connect a 12 volt high power connector to your card so that you don't have to worry about it. We're gonna give you some tricks so that you can test yourself to make sure it's really actually fully socketed in the card. So that'll be at the end of the video. As a reminder, we just published a deep dive on these connectors and we theorized sort of three main modes of failure. Two of them were related to user error plus a, a hint of design error or design oversight. And then one of them was related to foreign object debris. So let's get started and talk about the statement. Before that, this video is brought to you by Fractal and the Pop Air cases. The Fractal Pop did well in our recent review, performing admirably thermally while also offering unique color variations for the chassis body. The Fractal Pop Air is a relatively compact mid-tower while still offering ease of installation features and it even has optional five and a quarter inch mounts for those who still use front panel hardware like optical drives. Learn more at the link in the description below. If you missed the video we did on the 12 volt high power connector testing, you should absolutely watch it. Here's one reason why. Did you, did you get the shot? <laughs> this is the best connector in the world. Look at it. And if you need another reason, it's because I had all of this really cool data. It had a lot of really cool testing in there. We had x-rays, scanning electron microscopes, huge shout out to the testing lab that helped us do that. So that's a separate video. Now, uh, for the statement, we'll start with that. We asked the company several weeks ago if they had any statement for the melting power cables that were showing up online. At that time, Nvidia told us, no, it wasn't ready yet. It said that it was still trying to get enough cards and cables back in that it could actually do testing on its own and investigate and inspect the cables. So now the company is ready to talk about it and it has now completed its own testing and it's provided this comment, quote, we're actively investigating the reports. We are aware of about 50 cases globally. Our findings to date suggest that a common issue is that connectors are not fully plugged into the graphics card. To help ensure the connector is secure, we recommend plugging the power dongle into the graphics card first to ensure it's firmly and evenly plugged in before plugging the graphics card into the motherboard. We are investigating additional ways to ensure that the connector is secure before powering on the graphics card. NVIDIA and our partners are committed to supporting our customers and ensuring an expedited RMA process regardless of the cable or card used. Now, when we put together the 0.05% to 0.1% failure number range previously, that was based on two things. One was a leak of the sales figures from launch, which had NVIDIA rumored to be at 100,000 units sold. The other was discussion with NVIDIA's board partners to put together a tally of potential failures. With NVIDIA now confirming publicly one of those two numbers, 50 units, we can get a more accurate percentage. Just today as this video is going up, we contacted four board partners individually and asked if they knew how many 4090s NVIDIA had sold in total. All four of them individually gave us the same, freshly updated number without knowing what their peers said or that we even spoke to their peers. This allows us to corroborate the number against each source and trust it as factual. According to our research today, Nvidia has now sold in excess of 125,000 RTX 4090s. That sounds right, considering it was rumored as 100,000 units when leaked a couple of weeks ago. So now that Nvidia has officially confirmed the number of failures, that puts the failure rate actually at, at most, 0.04% if there are 50 out of 125,000 units, the cables that have failed. Pretty damn close to our 0.05% lower range number previously, but we can now say much more confidently that the actual failure rate is about 0.04%. So pretty close to it, not spot on, but not bad considering it was third party information. So a little below that floor that we set. Now, uh, next, if you're wondering how Nvidia could determine failures to be user error, they stopped just short of saying that, but they said not being plugged in properly. Uh, the way is the same that we used. So it's the process where when we were testing these, we microscoped the cable ends from users who sent them in to us and we could see a wear marker. These wear markers become exaggerated when there's burning. So because the plastic outside the connector housing expands at a different rate and is a different temperature than the heated but constrained plastic that is within the connector, you can see that marker as the plastic sort of bulges at the mark. And actually, in fact, in its own statement, NVIDIA writes this, quote, 
NVIDIA has been able to test cables that were RMA'd by affected customers. In all of the cases, a wear line is clearly visible that indicates the cable wasn't fully inserted into the 16-pin power connector. Now, just for clarity, when NVIDIA says 16-pin, they mean the same thing as when we say 12-pin. They're just factored in the four sense lines in there. It means the same thing, though. Now, uh, as for GN, we performed some additional analysis, so we would have two points of confirmation on each cable just in case that wear marker wasn't always necessarily accurate as to how it was actually connected. And our second point was to look at the dimples that are on the terminal or the connector basically on the inside of the housing. So uh, well, you can remove the terminals and scope the three bumps. You can do this with just a normal microscope also. And we were able to determine sometimes that only two had ever been contacted because only two were scratched. And sometimes you'd see all three dimples were scratched, but it still had a wear marker further down the connector. This we determined for those can happen if the cable is partially inserted uh, when you start with the build, like most the way in, but not fully latched, which is what I've got right now. So it, it looks like it's all the way in there, but because it's not latched, you can work it out over time if you're tugging on the cable to cable manage it or something. So that's why we think sometimes all three of those dimples can be scratched, meaning the cable was at one point fully inserted, but maybe not secured with the latch, uh, and then work its way out, and you still have a wear marker that indicates where it was at the time of burning. So that's how that happens. Now back to the comment. The last line from NVIDIA is important. Quote, NVIDIA is committed to supporting our customers and ensuring an expedited RMA process regardless of cable or card used. We asked NVIDIA to clarify whether it would cover burned or damaged cables and cards, even if the company determines that user error is the fault. NVIDIA informed us that even in cases where it determines from this issue, user error is at play, is the reason they root cause, uh, they said they will still be expediting an RMA replacement for that user, and the company stated, quote, anybody who has an issue relating to this, will be taken care of, will expedite the RMA. There were also recently some articles pertaining to NVIDIA's warranties. This started from Tom's Hardware, which ran really far with the word may in the warranty. Uh, the warranty said at that time, quote, use only the PCIe Gen 5 compliant power connector adapter for your GeForce RTX 40 series Founders Edition graphics card. Use of non-compliant or third-party power connector adapters may cause technical issues and may void your manufacturer warranty. Now today, this issue is basically marked as resolved because NVIDIA is confirming that it will treat all ca cases of melting cables the same way, which is to replace them and the card. Uh, that said, we don't think this line was ever intrinsically evil. It's kind of reasonable because, I mean, to suggest that improper cables may void a warranty isn't crazy. It's kind of like saying that use of improper gasoline in your car may void the warranty if it causes issues in the engine. I bought my gas from Joe Bob down the street. It was 10% ethanol and 50% pig fat. I don't know what the problem is. Why won't they warrant my car? So that one does actually seem to be like a reasonable use of the word may in a warranty. It's very standard. And before anyone writes a comment that cars run on pig fat just fine, well, I, I don't know. Substitute it for something they don't run on, and then the point makes sense. Anyway, NVIDIA says any issues with burned cables or GPUs doesn't matter uh, what the supply of the GPU or the cable is. They will replace it and process the warranty. And finally on this topic, we saw some previous coverage suggesting that NVIDIA should validate third-party 12-volt high power cables um, for use with cards to make it really clear what's acceptable uh, relating to the warranty stuff. We disagree with this sentiment because... It's in the best interest of an open and competitive market and for therefore consumers, pricing, innovation, as much as there can be in cables anyway, to have it not be gate capped by NVIDIA. If NVIDIA is a gatekeeper for cables, we're gonna have a really bad time and probably NVIDIA doesn't really wanna do it either. So remember that the 12 pin, 12 volt high power connector is an open standard. It was ratified under PCI SIG that's a consortium of companies, including Intel, AMD, NVIDIA, power supply manufacturers, motherboard partners. That means that this connector spec can be used by anyone. And it also means that cable manufacturers can come along and make way cooler cables for custom builds or just better built cables if they think they have a solution to some sort of problem. So to suggest that NVIDIA should gatekeep this ecosystem is kind of dangerous and honestly weird because 
no one did that for EPS 12 volt cables or PCIe 6 and 8 pins. This isn't, remember, this isn't an NVIDIA cable. The 12 pin is a PCI SIG thing. Anyone can use it. So anyway, that was a, that was kind of a weird one to see. But let's move on. So last part of this, uh, foreign object debris. We asked about foreign object debris and if NVIDIA had any comment on uh, our findings there where we were talking about, there's uh, just to clarify this too, because um, I think uh, there were some questions about this after our video from people in the audience. So not only did we see foreign object debris in the actual end of the connector where there's like metal burrs and things like that that can chip off and fall in, but also we observed some in the uh, strain relief. So that would be the rubber strain relief around the solder joints where you could see some floating around in there uh, near the solder joints, but in the strain relief, meaning the user can't simply use like a can of air to blow it out. It's, it's molded into the cable. So anyway, we asked about foreign object debris and they didn't really have any comments on that at this time because uh, it wasn't something that I think they were investigating. They were looking at the um, user side of connecting it. And so we don't have anything from them on that. Now, uh, improvements. So what can be done about this cable, I guess, is the question where how do you, how do you improve it to a point where user error is not even a concern and probably the answer is going to be maybe a better latching mechanism that's got some kind of mechanical response feedback for the user uh, so the user knows okay i've done that properly and i don't have to worry about it anymore another option would be to uh, do what igor mentioned nvidia said they're talking to pci sig about which would be changing the sense pins so you either shorten them uh, or you maybe lengthen the other pins on the 12-pin the part. In either case, the goal would be so that if the sense pins are not connected, the device does not turn on. So that would be a potential solution as well. Um, there's other things they could do, but I think the two primary ones would probably be improving the latching mechanism or working on the sense connection to prevent a boot entirely. If, uh, like, no power delivery to the card if the sense isn't in, and if you make part of it longer and part shorter, then you reduce some of the risk of generating like a, a conductive bad path for power that causes the melting. So that would be what they could do. Right now though, that is something that would have to go through PCI SIG. Uh, NVIDIA hasn't provided any real statement on where their progress is with that other than they are talking with industry partners and ecosystem partners and trying to figure out what they could possibly do. And um, it's possible NVIDIA does something unique on their own connector, but ultimately this is something that will need to be uh, improved for everybody. So it'll go through PCI SIG eventually. Okay, last part. I'm gonna get a card and a camera operator and we're gonna show you a few ways to really make sure you've properly installed the cable so you don't have to worry about it anymore and <laughs> unsocket it and check every day. Okay, so we're gonna start with showing you the correct way to connect this. Uh, the board partner cards have the connector on the board a little more hidden. It's a little submerged between fins and things like that. So kind of harder to see the connector at the level of contact between this line on the actual cable and the connector housing. So that's hard to see on the board partner cards. Very easy to see on the FE cards. So we're going to use the FE here. The board partner cards though, you can still do this without too much issue. So the way to connect this, first of all, uh, there's four sense pins. They're located on either side, depending on which card you have. It depends on the connector. So we're just going to line those up. That is the 12 volt side. And the cable itself, you can see it's got a small clip on it like any other cable. And we're going to line it up. This takes a lot more force than you think it will. It's not going to hurt the card, so don't be afraid. But it does take more force than you would expect. So we just push down. This is not socketed. It looks pretty in there, but that's actually not all the way socketed. So a little more, I'm actually gonna pull my mic here so you can hear the clip. So obviously very minor click there. You can barely hear it and depending on, uh, you know, how loose the connector, the clip is on your cable, you might not hear it at all. If you're pushing the clip down, you're definitely not gonna hear anything. You will feel a lot of resistance here. It's not clipped in yet. Uh, I'm not pushing that hard, but it feels all the way seated. To get it clipped in, one more time, we're gonna do uh, more of a push here. So right now, now it's clipped in, but there was actually no noise. 
So the way I know it's good is, I mean, first of all, if we do a slight tug on this cable, you're not trying to rip it out of the socket, um, you do a tug like this, that's not going anywhere. I mean, there's a little bit of play side to side, but it's clearly not working its way out. This is a fully socketed connector. Um, and if you're gonna pull on it like this to check it, just make sure you push back down when you're done in case you've unseated it at all. But you know, it, this is clearly in there. Versus, let's do a demo here. If I've got it 99% of the way in, but not clipped, it looks good. It feels like there was a lot of resistance. You think you're done, but very easily comes out. So I think that's where people are going wrong. They're getting it here and actually they're, they're going through, they're managing their cables and everything after the fact. And as they're doing that, let's just do a demo. Uh, if it's say 90% in, they're back here managing cables and they're behind the case, not really looking at the front. And this is happening. It's walking its way out. They close the panel, not knowing that they've got two millimeters of slack in the pins there sticking up where there's actually not any contact uh, at all. So I think that's what's happening. So final bit of advice, I would strongly suggest, actually Nvidia said this in their statement, very strongly suggest socketing it fully before you put it in the case or the motherboard because you have full access to everything. So if it's a board partner card where you've got a lip raised around this, like the Asus cards, you have enough uh, clearance and access to see. Um, once it's in a case, it's really hard to see down there. So you, know, you, you can move it around, you can inspect it. And if you're able to see the base of the connector and the cable and you just look and make sure they're fully together. But I mean, I don't know. I think there's much more to it than that. It is a, an uncomfortably high amount of force. You just need to get over that. You're not going to hurt it. It's thick plastic and metal. It's fine. I mean, worst case, you push it too hard. Like it's not going anywhere. So the only way you could really damage this is if you like Hulk pushed it and snapped the connector off the PCB. Chance of that is so incredibly low. I, I promise you no one in this audience has that level of strength. And then I would say this too, last piece of advice. When you're done cable managing it and you get all the cables pulled and tucked behind the board or, or whatever you're doing with it, if it's like, you know, like that in the case, you might be pulling them around. Just go back through one last time before you close the panel, push on it, and, uh, and you should be got. I mean, if you do all that stuff, there's really just basically uh, no, no shot, as the kids say, that you've left it unseated. So. so that's it for the updates and for the statement from NVIDIA. They posted that on their forums today. You can go check out the forum post if you want to learn more about it. It's on their GeForce forum. But I mean, I think that pretty much covers it. At this point, we're not going to be revisiting this topic unless there's major news or if NVIDIA has more to say, because uh, I think we've tested it about as much as we can. We are going to do some testing on third party 12 volt high power cables. It's not for the reasons that were just covered in all of this, but instead it's just to see if the ones that are using say poor gauge wire are a risk for different reasons. So that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. As always, subscribe for more. You can go to store.gamersnexus.net where we still have the code. This is fine. Active for 10% off until uh, I think the 23rd, so next week. And subscribe for more. We'll see you all next time.